I'm Craig Maud, and I'm going to show you today how I put together my mailing list, the Rodent Explorer's mailing list. And uh, man, I just have to preface this by saying it's really complicated. It's crazy. I know it's a crazy, crazy system that I use. And um, I'm mainly showing it because people want to see how Hugo, which is a static site generating software, uh, works in the background. And so I thought this was as simple as an example as I could possibly muster. So here we go. The mailing list begins in writing software, and I just use one of the many, many, many available markdown friendly, minimalist um, focus writing softwares. And the goal here is mainly to just flesh out all of the chunks, the pieces, the bits, the different sections that I'm going to want to use. And inside of this writing software, I don't do anything with images. It's purely about text, voice, uh, form, shape, length, things like that. And um, every single time I open this and I begin the new letter, I think, how am I going to write this? I don't have anything to say. How am I going to get it more than a paragraph into this letter? And inevitably, it's always too long. One thing that I've been doing recently, I've always collected links and ideas around the Rodin mailing list um, in text files, but uh, recently I've switched to things, um, and let me pop over there, and this is where I dump anything I find that's mildly interesting in the world that might be of relevance to the Roden mailing list. And one of the things I love about things is that anywhere I am on my desktop, if I'm in a web browser or email or whatever, I can just hit command space, boom, it brings up a new to do. I can type in, you know, something interesting. And then boom, 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 boom. And here I can just type Rodin, it goes into Rodin Explorers, done. And it's in the list. Pretty easy, pretty simple. And then um, let's get rid of that so we don't log it. And you can see in here, you know, just some examples of stuff that I've been thinking about possibly writing about. Um, tracing a company from uh, a demo to an IPO. This is kind of an interesting thread on Hacker News. Um, the Meanwhile Mailing List by Daniel Gray is a great design mailing list. Nate Smith is an incredible drummer, delicate and powerful and so um, precise. And But in the pocket, uh, he's really a beautiful, beautiful drummer that I just recently found. I was a drummer for 20 years, so I thought I might start writing about that a little more on the mailing list. Um, things like David Mitchell and David Peace discussing life. Uh, in Japan as writers. David Peace is still a novelist living in Japan. David Mitchell started in Japan. Now he lives, I think, in Ireland. Stuff like that. Um, things like The Book of Tea, which is a, 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 a transcription of a lecture given in the early 1900s about from a Japanese person lecturing on tea. And part of that is talking about how this sort of Western eye looking into Japan sees it as barbaric. And I've noticed the same thing, the same trend in the startup industry, that Silicon Valley people come to Japan and they look at the, at the Japanese startup industry and they tend to go, you're doing it wrong. Um, whereas I think in the context of a lot of what's happened recently, maybe Japan isn't doing it wrong. And that break, move, th move fast and break things is not necessarily the ethos that we want everywhere in the world. Um, so just ideas like that, you know, in this, so this Paul Thomas Anderson phantom thread commentary i can actually cross it off i wrote about that in the last mailing list so i found things to just be a beautiful simple um, wonderful piece of software to collect ideas that i'm then able to fold back into larger ideas in the mailing list so then once i've gotten this to kind of a good place once i've gotten it to maybe the 40 or 50 percent mark i will then move to sublime text um, which is over here and sublime text is where the sort of shaping of the mailing list begins to happen. This is where I start to bring in images um, and where I do multiple drafts. And uh, 
you can see that I wrote here in Markdown and um, I export in plain text Markdown and then I'm able to just dump it <clears throat> into Sublime Text. For Hugo, uh, you can see over here this is sort of my directory structure for my website and the Explorer's machine is um, the Hugo subsite that generates the mailing list. Now, man, already I can see a lot of your eyes glazing over. Why would you do this? Why would you <laughs> go to such complicated lengths to make a mailing list? Well, for one, I wanted an archive. And I wanted an archive of the mailing list that I owned whole hog uh, on my servers. And so <clears throat> in these Hugo markdown files, you have something called uh, front matter. And for Rodin, it's relatively simple. It's, you know, the date, the issue, and the title, and then if it's a draft or not. And then I start bringing in images. I start thinking about, well, what do I want to illustrate cartography? What do I want to show at the top of, you know, this friends with books section? And I use um, Affinity Photo to do all that editing now, actually. So this is a lot of it is just trimming, changing levels, uh, modifying uh, the, the crop, and then exporting in optimized JPEG format for the web. Um, but I've just found Adobe CC to be so heavy and onerous, and it's just, it, it feels like a burden every time I open it. So I looked for an alternative, and Affinity is pretty good, and it's relatively affordable. And it's not subscription, which is nice. So why am I why am I in Sublime Text editing uh, Markdown and using this front matter? Well, it's because um, Hugo will then let me um, here in the terminal now um, in my Hugo directory, and with Hugo, I just type Hugo server. Boom! It starts a local host server, and I'm able to come over here and go. Um, I can copy and paste this localhost um, URL, and then I have my Rodin archive updated in real time. So let's shrink these guys down a little. I know that I can use utilities like Magnet to make that faster, but um, so here it is shrunk down, and here is this markdown file rendered uh, via Hugo into HTML. And so <clears throat> what is good about this? Well, uh, a couple things. I can do an edit here. I can sacred mirror, and it is updated instantly over there on the Hugo site. Put that back to mirrors, and it's back to mirrors. So I can edit and test uh, in Markdown in real time and see the changes manifest right before my eyes. And why am I even writing in Markdown? Why am I not just doing this in HTML? Why am I not using some... WYSIWYG editor. Well, you know, I like Markdown for its archival properties. And again, <clears throat> we're getting into really geeky stuff here, but uh, I'm just kind of opening the kimono fully in the sense of uh, showing this really complicated, weird system I use to produce this mailing list. And what I mean by I like the archival properties of Markdown, I mean that um, it's just plain text and I can transport this to a new system pretty easily. So that feels nice. I'm not tied to Hugo for the rest of my life if I don't want to be, if it stops being updated or breaks or whatever. So I will go back and forth. I will do um, many iterations on this. In fact, I will print out this um, rendered version of the mailing list um, probably two or three times editing with pen and paper <clears throat> and then come back in here make those changes add new images move images around double check everything and then once finally I feel sort of comfortable with all of that um, I will consider bringing it into my mailing list software and what I will do is um, I have to save uh, the local files. So this is all run through git and so I'll do a git commit and then new rodin. Um, uh, I would make it a little more uh, 
detail than that. Um, we don't have any changes, so nothing is happening here. I have some untracked files for, for a blog post I haven't put up yet. And then I will get push that to my server. It will push those changes to GitHub, which is kind of the third party where stuff is, is held. And then I, I SSH into my server, which is a DigitalOcean droplet. Again, uh, I know this is super geeky, way, way more complicated than any mailing list should be, but I thought it'd be interesting to show how this all works. And then in my droplet, I have a thing called a uh, script I've made called sync public HTML. <clears throat> and if I run this, it pulls from GitHub, will bring in all the latest changes, and then will render. It'll use Hugo in each of these different sub Hugo directories to render the website. And so here it is building Rodent Explorer's archive, um, 20 pages, uh, 99 non page files, so 99 images throughout all of the um, different mailing lists. And it took 364 milliseconds. So then what does this mean? Well, it means now we have a craigmod.com wrote in rendering of this. So this is on the web now, live. And here is the sort of canonical archive unit of issue 18. And then um, the real benefit of all of this is that I get um, this other template, the secret template called latest. And if I go to latest, you'll see it looks almost identical to uh, just the canonical 18 archive. What's going on here is that I'm pulling out a few things that are specific to um, an archive and not necessary for a mailing list. So for example, I have here, if you enter into my website via the archive, you're just landing here for the first time, just visiting, you know, subscribe to Rodent Explorer's mailing list. And then I have kind of a similar call to, oops, I have a similar call to action at the bottom here. Um, subscribe here, really subtle. Maybe I should make that a little more explicit. But uh, here in the mailing list, I don't have that. But instead, I have on the bottom here, unsubscribe instantly forever and forever. So I have unsubscribe links that render here on the mailing list. Um, what's really nice about Hugo is I'm able to use the same markdown file. So the same markdown file generates both of these templates. So I don't have to worry about copying, pasting stuff over. And then um, what I do then is then I go to campaign monitor and I start a new campaign and call it Roden issue 18 for example yada 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 it's from me and then the real benefit of having this latest archive is that then on the import of the campaign I just feed that to campaign monitor and I say move my CSS in line great it does that and then boom everything looks really good what I'll do is then I will send um, a test email and when that test email arrives I'll test it in I'll look at it in um, Apple Mail on the desktop on iOS Gmail on desktop, Gmail on iOS, and I will go through and I will click literally um, every single link. So I will click every single link here, and I will make sure that every single link leads to where I think it's supposed to lead. I won't do that here, but you get the idea. So going through and making sure that everything, including that unsubscribe link, um, goes through and works properly. And I will do that two or three times. And as I'm reading on the phone, the preview email, I will inevitably find stuff to fix. And I will go back into then sublime text and make those edits. I will then go into terminal and push those edits to get pull them on the server, and then do another I would like to re import the campaign, keep the same URL, it's re-rendered over there because I pulled it on the server and then do that import again and basically go through that maybe four or five times um, and then as you noticed here this 
original um, text edit edit of the mailing list then becomes kind of this early draft, which is all it needs to be. But I like I like using the separate editor to just get that early draft done and then begin moving things over to Sublime Text and, um, and then pushing it through the mailing list um, system. And then import the plain text email from that uh, HTML and then go send out send out that email so um, I realize that this is a very um, complicated overly complicated uh, system for sending out a simple mailing list but um, for me it works well the benefits I get are again my own archives on my own server uh, I get complete design control I get complete control over the image optimization I feel like I'm doing a better job than most third-party software would do and um, on the recent episode of on margins episode 5 with Jason Kotke we talked about just the subversive act of owning your own site today um, so I feel like it's you know, for me, important to have that ownership of the site. And so doing it in this way and having these different stages um, allows me to, to, to own the mailing list in that way. But then also the different stages allow me to see it with fresh eyes. So I see it once in the text editor and it will do a few revisions in there and then I'll see it again in sublime text and I'll do some revisions there and then I'll see it rendered locally and I'll do a revisions there and I'll print it out and I'll edit, do line edits and, and, and move things around, re-edit in Sublime Text, put those edits in, render it on the server, push it out as a preview email, and I will inevitably do more edits there and then finally publish it to the subscribers, uh, of which there are about 10,000 now. You know, and I mean, 10,000 people is a lot of people to get an email, and so I would prefer, uh, you know, to have as few mistakes as possible and to go through as many revisions as possible because I don't send these out weekly or even monthly. And so I'd like them to exist on their own in their own kind of evergreen way. So that is the long and short of putting together the Roden Explorer's mailing list. Um, I realize this is very, very complicated, but it works for me. And uh, some of you wanted to know what Hugo looked like or what that flow looked like. So I thought this was the best way uh, to show you. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you.